This is the book of Abraham, a part of the scriptures used today by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. But where did this book come from? Joseph Smith, founder of the Mormon Church, claimed to translate it from an ancient Egyptian scroll he purchased from a traveling antiquities dealer in 1835. Smith claimed the scroll contained a lost book of Abraham, an original text nearly 4,000 years old. At the time in America, no one could read ancient Egyptian, but today, Egyptologists know exactly what it says. So what was this ancient scroll? Was it a lost book of Abraham? Or was it something else? Stay tuned and find out for yourself. Imagine yourself here in Kirtland, Ohio in 1835. You're in the Western Reserve. The people are farmers, blacksmiths, and millers, and about 25% are part of a fledgling community known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. Joseph Smith and his followers came to Kirtland in early 1831. And though the people are poor, they've begun construction on an elaborate new temple. Joseph was a young man, but he was able to inspire people, generate enthusiasm, and raise money. The temple was expensive and took a great sacrifice on the part of the people to build. But now Joseph needs to raise some more money. And what he wants to buy may surprise you. A traveling antiquities dealer named Michael H. Chandler has come to town peddling his wares. An exhibit of, of all things, four Egyptian mummies. It was a spectacle. For a small price, you could see fragments of mysterious writings. Things from ancient Egypt. Even real mummified human corpses. All of which had been on earth since Bible times. Chandler and his exhibit were always able to draw a crowd. The four mummies were the main drawing card, but several prominent brethren of the Mormon Church became even more intrigued by the scrolls with mysterious ancient writing, Egyptian writing. Five years earlier, Joseph Smith, their prophet and leader, had published the Book of Mormon, a remarkable work in that Joseph said he had not actually authored the book, but rather he had translated it from the records of an ancient pre-Columbian civilization. Joseph said an angel appeared to him, an angel named Moroni, who presented Joseph with a set of gold plates. The plates were said to have been inscribed with a mysterious language called Reformed Egyptian. The story is that Joseph Smith translated the gold plates by the gift and power of God. But Joseph said he was required to return the plates to the angel after completing his translation, so they are not available for independent examination. When the Book of Mormon was published in 1830, it established Joseph Smith as a prophet and seer in the eyes of his followers. Joseph had brought forth one volume of lost scripture, and they believed God would use him to restore other lost scriptures. One of the original appeals, I think, of early Mormonism was Joseph Smith's claim to be a prophet, seer, and revelator. Uh, he had promised that the Lord was opening up the bowels of the earth and bringing forth ancient scriptures and would continue to do so because we were living in the last days of the earth. 
When Michael Chandler arrived in Kirtland with ancient papyrus scrolls covered with mysterious, unknown writings, the saints wondered if their prophet could decipher these records. What happened was the enthusiasm was there for the members of the church to think that these things had tremendous value, that the Lord indeed was bringing to the prophet Joseph Smith these documents for him to translate. Joseph said that he could indeed decipher these scrolls. In fact, he said these were more than just ancient Egyptian artifacts. These were none other than the writings of Abraham and Joseph, famous figures from the Old Testament of the Bible. If this were true, these scrolls would be an unprecedented and momentous discovery, a preservation of writings from 2,000 years before Christ. But what were they really? Stay tuned as we investigate a remarkable Mormon claim, the rediscovery of a lost book of Abraham. The story begins in 1833 in the eastern United States when a man named Michael Chandler was commissioned to sell a collection of ancient Egyptian antiquities. The collection included 11 mummies, two papyrus scrolls, and several scroll fragments. The artifacts had originally been exhumed by a tomb raider named Antonio Lobolo in the early 1820s from a burial site along the banks of the Nile River near the Egyptian city of Thebes. After Lobolo's death, his estate shipped the artifacts to New York City, hoping they could be sold for a profit. Chandler's travels with the antiquities included stops in Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Harrisburg, where he was able to sell seven of the mummies. He arrived in Cleveland in March of 1835 with the papyrus scrolls and four remaining mummies. An article in the Cleveland Advertiser newspaper of March 26, 1835, noted Chandler's interest in selling his remaining artifacts. The exhibitor permits as free an examination of them as is consistent with their preservation. Specimens of the ancient method of writing on papyrus found with the mummies are also shown by Mr. Chandler, whose intelligent conversation adds much to the interest of the exhibition. The collection is offered for sale by the proprietor. Cleveland Advertiser, March 26, 1835. Michael Chandler had, was apparently acting as an agent for several businessmen in Philadelphia. And apparently the arrangement was that he was supposed to um, display and sell these antiquities as he displayed them and keep a small commission for himself and send the remainder of the money back to the businessmen in Philadelphia. Once he was out on the road, he apparently lost contact with his businessmen and was uh, dispensing of these antiquities as he went and keeping the entire profit for himself. He had heard about Joseph Smith, the Mormon prophet, and his abilities to uh, translate languages, and so he wended his way to Kirtland, Ohio, and arrived there in July of 1835. Chandler's arrival in Kirtland was described at the time by William W. Phelps, a member of the Mormon community in a letter to his wife. Four Egyptian mummies were brought here. There were two papyrus rolls besides some other ancient Egyptian writings with them. As no one could translate these writings, they were presented to President Smith. He soon knew what they were and said they, the rolls of papyrus, contained the sacred record of Joseph in Pharaoh's court in Egypt and the teachings of Father Abraham. God has so ordered it that these mummies and writings have been brought into the church. July 20, 1835. That created a tremendous value for these papyri. But Chandler was unwilling to sell the papyri by themselves. That was all that the prophet was interested in. Uh, he insisted on selling the four mummies that were all that were left now and everything. He was ready now to unload the entire uh, collection of antiquities that he had left.